It's a pretty incredible thought knowing that many movies are shot on location where sets are not built but instead a filmmaker makes a choice to use a real life setting. Places that we have access to that we could visit, places that were already there and not necessarily made for film, but they have such a unique feeling to them or unique look to them that filmmakers realize that these locations just add an element of cinema or realism that a fake set can't provide. Viewers of these films can visit these types of places and feel a connection and a thought of, oh, I've been there, or oh, wow, I can go visit this place where one of my favorite movies were shot. It gives a viewer even more of a reason to connect with the film. Many places start to become not only known for their long-standing history, but now they also become associated with famous films that were shot at these places. A lot of these places provide the chance to give the filmmaker a more attractive and scenic shot within their films. And this concept is what brought me to a couple cities that are notorious for their scenic location shooting. This brings me to New York, a city full of taxis, skyscrapers, along with many iconic movie locations. New York is filled with so many large attractions and they are all at a filmmaker's disposal. When filming a movie on location, it's all about trying to take advantage of the beautiful scenery that is provided around you. Central Park and Times Squares is usually used in filmmaking because they have such a beautiful and scenic feeling to them. So most filmmakers want to use them in their films. So for Central Park, it's all greenery everywhere. It's very beautiful. There's so much grass and trees. So it's I think it's the only nature that I saw in New York. So many filmmakers would want to use that because of how beautiful and nature-y it is. And Times Square is a very iconic spot in New York. Everybody goes to see it because it's just so famous. So using that in a film would just show everybody that they're in New York without even having to state that the characters are or the scenery is set in New York.
This ends my trip through New York and brings me to my next city, a city that is filled with iconic small shops, residencies, and attractions, along with its beautiful scenery. Are you familiar with any locations within Los Angeles that have been used as a backdrop or a set for films? Um, yeah, there's been uh, quite a number of films done in Los Angeles over the past century, uh, being that it was the um, you know the mecca of Hollywood filmmaking. Um, the, um, for instance, Griffith Observatory was. Was, was famous for uh, its role in Rebel Without a Cause with Natalie Wood and James Dean. Uh, the Hollywood Bowl was uh, featured in uh, Star is Born with uh, Janet Gaynor and Frederick March in uh, 1937. Uh, D.W. Griffith's Intolerance, uh, his uh, Babylon set was uh, fil filmed right over on Hollywood Boulevard. The set was uh, burned down in the 20s, but it was not too far from here. still some uh, studios that are still around, the Jim Henson Studios, it was uh, the former Char uh, Charlie Chaplin Studios, and The Lot, uh, which isn't too far from there, is all the former United Artists Studios. Um, DeMille Barn, the home of the Hollywood Heritage Museum, uh, was where they filmed uh, the first feature-length film in Hollywood called The Squaw Man. Cecil B. DeMille and Jesse Lasky came from the East Coast to film uh, the Broadway uh, play The Squaw Man with Dustin Farman who was on the uh, stage in New York and they um, had a budget of like $20,000 and in pretty much uh, made 10 times over that amount. And so much so that they were able to build a studio around the barn and eventually uh, the barn and the studio uh, became Paramount Pictures, uh, the studio that we know today. So this um, structure is very historic in that sense. And Paramount Pictures today over in Melrose is the only major studio uh, still in Hollywood that um, is from the, from the uh, original time when it was founded. It's the only studio in Hollywood that's still around. Just north of us, um, in the Hollywood um, Forest Lawn Cemetery Memorial Park, was where they filmed, uh, D.W. Griffith filmed Birth of a Nation, which was a milestone film in 1915, um, the, a film that really solidified uh, the movies as a serious art. And they filmed the uh, battle scenes on the slopes, which you can still see, the hills are still there. In Los Angeles, two very iconic spots are the Santa Monica Pier and Venice Beach. The Santa Monica Pier is so iconic because of 
the fact that there is a roller coaster, a Ferris wheel, a bunch of little shops on the pier, and it's basically in the water. So that's a very iconic spot location, and many tourists also go to travel to there. So the Venice Beach has the skate parks and shops on the side that are very unique and very different. And the beach is very beautiful because it is located in the Pacific Ocean. There is uh, salt water and there's some rocks that are there and it's just so beautiful and people love to go there. The real idea behind this is that almost anything can be transformed into a set. As long as you have a vision behind it and you could see a place for it within your film, then almost anything can become a backdrop to what you're creating. And with all these films being shot in these locations, it really makes you think, did the movies make the city or did the city make the movies?